if you are a true binge eater, eating large amount of food, short period of time, almost going comatose, if you are a true binge eater, seek help. Hey everyone, this is Becky. And I'm Angie. And welcome to Real Talk with Becky and Angie. It was seven months and at the seven month mark, I decided I was ready to graduate. I, I came in that night and announced, you know what? I think I'm done. I think I'm good. And uh, she looked at me like, like she was disappointed because I was a contributor to the group at that point. No. I was, I was. Not you, Becky. You're the recovering. wallflower. You're sitting in the back. Nobody notices you. I was recovering and I was doing really, really well. And so I was able to support the other people in the group. And that felt really, really good. Felt, felt good to give back after all that I had gotten out of it. <sighs> Look at that. What did we talk about last week about where I feel like my superpower is giving back and helping others? See, that's your area. Yeah. I love it. So I want to go back to the five minute meditation. Yes. Okay. Every single week we would do this five minute meditation and she would always say, she being the, the leader, doctor. Give a she, shout out to the doctor again. Dr. Halei Kashani. She's amazing. And okay. so she would say, be open. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And every week she'd go around the table. How was your experience? Oh, I feel relaxed. I feel relaxed. I feel relaxed. That's what everybody said until this one day where I had an epiphany. I've got my eyes closed. The room is dark and I see this tree and looking behind the tree is what looks like Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. So the Harry was this like big the monster woolly like the, guy. Yeah. yeah. So he's looking behind the tree and I look at him and I'm like, I know exactly who you are. You're my eating disorder. And I looked at him and I'm like, why are you here? What are, why are you here? And so I befriended him. And when she went around the table and said, how was your experience? And I said that. I mean, everyone was like, well, let's go back in. Let's go back to the meditation. Uh, so in my program called Stop Overeating and Start Living, I, one of the exercises I have them do is draw your gremlin. It has been so powerful for so many people to say, wow, once I can see it as something outside of me, I'm able to separate myself from that. Because there's with binge eating, there is an enormous amount of shame. There's an enormous mm. amount of hiding, you know, the effort that you get to go to, to, I mean, I've taken out a couple of boxes of Girl Scout cookies and then I get to go buy some more to replace them oh. before my husband gets home. The, the, the level of hiding your tracks is exhausting and then worrying, oh my God, is he going to find out? Is he going to see the wrappers in the garage, in the garbage can? Is he going to see the wrappers in my car? That, that level of, That's a it's fear. a huge fear. It's a real thing. And it's just weighing, weighing and weighing on, um, you know, a, a binge eater. So sounds like binge eating is very similar to any other kind of addiction, yeah. what, right? You can be addicted to food. So is it a food addiction or is there a difference? I don't want to confuse the two, but I'm visualized when you're saying that I, I know some people who are addicted to narcotics or different things and it sounds like almost like the same story. Like they're hiding their tracks literally, but you know, it sounds like it's very similar or the same. Is there, a, would you, do you know anything? Is that the same different or my experience? Like I shared with you when my husband was upstairs and I realized I couldn't get my fix. I think that kind of would translate to an addiction to food. And it's also an addiction to that, that need to, it's almost like a, an, a rush of endorphins when you get in all that food, like, you know, it's, it's this, everything lights up in the so brain. It's physiological. Oh, yes. It's physiological. Yeah. So if what I understand is it's emotional, psychological, physiological, it's all of this stuff. Yes. It's not just, it's situational. It's your environment. There's all these things. It's not just you were born with a you know, a trigger that's off or whatever, speaking of triggers, but, um, you know what I mean? There, there's a whole, could be any number of things and it could be all the things. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, because we're talking, you know, so, so 
Now, let me step back a second because I want to talk about this for a sec. Your mom, if I remember right, was always on the heavy yes. side. Always. Well, right? she lost 100 pounds like four times in my life. So that's why I chuckle. So she lost 400 pounds. Okay. And then gain, and so is this, so hereditary, would you say? Well, that's a great question. I, there's the, I think the jury's out on that. Yes, you can have a tendency to gain weight because your genes, your genes as in your parents' genes, um, <laughs> you know. Genetics. Yes, exactly. That's the word. <laughs> um, and, and yet at the same time, we're at choice. You know, we're at choice. And I think that given... And I might offend people it here. Is. It is. When you have overweight parents and they, um, they're going to feed you in a certain way because that's what they know and that's how they eat. And so as a grown up, you're going to go into your life that way too. You as a grown up, get to decide how am I going to eat? We can't you know, I could blame my mom for putting me on a diet at 13 for the rest of my life. I could blame it. It's not going to, it's not going to change anything. So I get to own that. Hey, yeah, I was a binge eater and I'm still recovering and overeating and binge eating are two different things. They can go hand in hand here. Here's another piece. And I know this is, it doesn't really answer your question, but I'm going to say it anyways. Depression and anxiety typically go hand in hand with binge eating disorder. Um, and here's why, here's my experience. I'm going to speak from my experience with anxiety and depression, have, having had it, and I have actually overcome anxiety and depression. Um, having had that, when you have anxiety, you're like, you're like living in the future. You're, you're just accelerated and it's just, blah, 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 blah. it's just this, um, like wires just going crazy. And then you come down from that and it could take a day. It could take a week. You come down from that and you feel depressed. Binge eating is the same way. You, you get this high from eating and then you have this big crash from down. So they oftentimes people that are binge eaters have anxiety and or depression. So it's a, it can be mental health, mm. you know, as well. Oh, that sounds like, well, anytime I hear the word disorder, I think that is mental health. Right. And am I wrong to label so, it that way? So thank you for saying that because I forgot that part. It's a really important part. When I went to see my doctor and she said, she asked me if anything else was wrong. And I said, I've got this weird thing, eating thing. And she said, it's an eating disorder. I go, no, it's not. She goes, Becky, you have disordered eating. And when I, exactly, when I heard it that way, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, it is. What is ordered ordered eating? eating? Yes. If, if you're not disordered eating, what is ordered eating? It's, <laughs> it's eating like a normal person. <laughs> oh, you're going to send me into anxiety. <laughs> God. Okay. All right. So the reason I brought up the thing about parents is no, I totally learned how to binge eat from my mom. I totally did. I'll call okay. her out. God bless her. She is no longer with us. I, I would call her. She would palm food. So so she would palm food. Anyone? Oh, it looked like you were had this like light bulb moment. She would palm food. No, I, I can't. I got I got to so know what palm she food would is. Go in, so she would go into the pantry and she would get a bunch of food and put it in her hand and just, but keep it like this, like no one could see it. Right. And then just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or, you know, take it out and just eat it. And it was basically, it was hiding in plain sight. It was hiding food in plain sight. You know, she didn't need to say, don't do this. She didn't need to say, this is what I'm doing. It was really obvious what she was doing. She was hiding her food in front of us. Yeah. So we, you, we learn how to behave Behaviors. from our parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do. And I do, you know, I do think there's something to do with genetics. I mean, just even in our body shapes, if our body shapes, our hair color, eye color, skin color, all those things are genetic. Why would our not, why wouldn't yes. our weight also be, or our body composition, just put that, you know, body composition, weight, um, all those things. So that one thing that you want to tell people that are listening today about overeating, binge eating, whatever that is for them. You are worthy of living a binge-free life. 
So please, please promise me, pinky swear right now, pinky swear that you will take care of yourself and, and get the help that you need because it's out there and you are worthy of it. So worthy. All right. Thank you all. Love you so much. See you next week. Bye-bye.